Louis Nicholas Davout, better known as Davout, 1st Duke of Ousted, 1st Prince of Ecmoule, was a French general who was Marshal of the Empire during the Napoleonic era. His talent for war along with his reputation as a stern disciplinarian, earned him the title, the Iron Marshal. He is ranked along with Massena and Lannis as one of Napoleon's finest commanders. His loyalty and obedience to Napoleon were absolute. During his lifetime, Davout's name was commonly spelled Davoust, which is how it appears on the Arc de Triomphe and in much of the correspondence between Napoleon and his generals. Biography Davout was born at Anu, the son of Jean Francois Davout and his wife Francoise Adelaide Menard de Villers. He was educated at Military Academy in Auxerre, before transferring to the École Militaire in Paris on 29 September 1785. He graduated on 19 February 1788 and was appointed a sous-lieutenant in the Royal Champagne Cavalry Regiment in garrison at Hesdin. On the outbreak of the French Revolution, he embraced its principles. He was chef de bataillon in a volunteer corps in the campaign of 1792, and distinguished himself at the Battle of Neerwinden the following spring. He had just been promoted to general of brigade when he was removed from the active list because of his noble birth. He nevertheless served in the campaigns of 1794 to 1797 on the Rhine, and accompanied the sex in the Egyptian expedition of Napoleon Bonaparte. Although on his return he did not take part in the Battle of Marengo, where his friend de Sex was killed while making a decisive contribution to the victory, 65 Napoleon, who had great confidence in his abilities finally promoted him to general de division and arranged his marriage to his sister Pauline's sister-in-law, A.I.M.E. Acuti Leclerc thus making him part of Napoleon's extended family, and gave him a command in the consular guard. At the accession of Napoleon as emperor, Davout was one of the generals who were created marshals of France. Davout was the youngest and least experienced of the generals promoted to marshal, which earned him the hostility of other generals throughout his career. As commander of the Third Corps of the Grand AARME AQT, Davout rendered his greatest services. At the Battle of Austerlitz, after a forced march of 48 hours, the Third Corps bore the brunt of the Allies' attack. In the subsequent War of the Fourth Coalition, Davout with a single corps fought and won the Battle of Austat against the main Prussian army, which had more than twice as many soldiers at its disposal. Historian François Guyauer Toul writes, At Jena, Napoleon won a battle he could not lose. At Austat, Davout won a battle he could not win. As a reward, Napoleon let Davout and his men enter first in Berlin on 25 October 1806. Davout added to his renown in the campaign of Eilor and Friedland. Napoleon left him as governor-general of the newly created Duchy of Warsaw following the Treaty of Tilsite of 1807, and the next year created him Duke of Auerstadt. In the War of 1809, Davout took part in the actions which culminated in the Battle of Ekmul, and also distinguished himself in the Battle of Wagram, where he commanded the right wing. He was created Prince of Ekmul following this campaign. He was entrusted by Napoleon with the task of organizing the Corps of Observation of the Elbe, which would become the gigantic army with which Napoleon invaded Russia in 1812. In this, Davout commanded the First Corps, numbering over 70,000, and defeated the Russians at Mohilev before he joined the main army with which he continued throughout the campaign and the retreat from Moscow. During the retreat he conducted the rear guard, which was deemed too slow by the emperor, and was replaced by Ney. His inability to hold out at Berezina until the arrival of Ney in his corps, led him into disgrace and he would not meet with the emperor again until his return from Elba. In 1813 he commanded the Hamburg military district, and defended Hamburg, a poorly fortified and provisioned city, through a long siege, only surrendering on the direct order of the new king Louis XVIII who had come to the throne after the fall of Napoleon in April 1814. 
Davout's military character has been interpreted as cruel, and he had to defend himself against many attacks upon his conduct at Hamburg. He was a stern disciplinarian, who exacted rigid and precise obedience from his troops, and consequently his corps was more trustworthy and exact in the performance of its duty than any other. For example, Davout forbade his troops from plundering enemy villages, a policy he would enforce by the use of the death penalty. Thus, in the early days of the Grand AARME AQT, the Third Corps tended to be entrusted with the most difficult work. He was regarded by his contemporaries as one of the ablest of Napoleon's marshals. On the first restoration he retired into private life, openly displaying his hostility to the Bourbons, and when Napoleon returned from Elba, Davout rejoined him. Appointed Minister of War, he reorganized the French army in so far as time permitted, and he was so indispensable to the War Department that Napoleon kept him in Paris during the Waterloo campaign. To what degree his skill and bravery would have altered the fortunes of the campaign of 1815 can only be surmised, but Napoleon has been criticized for his failure to avail himself in the field of the services of the best general he then possessed. However, this is countered with the fact that he was the only possible candidate who had not sworn loyalty to the Bourbons and thus had the integrity his role as Minister of War required. Davout directed the gallant but hopeless defense of Paris after Waterloo, and was deprived of his martialate and his titles at the Second Restoration. When some of his subordinate generals were prescribed, he demanded to be held responsible for their acts, as executed under his orders, and he endeavored to prevent the condemnation of Michel Ney. After a time the hostility of the Bourbons towards Davout faded, and he became reconciled to the monarchy. In 1817 his rank and titles were restored, and in 1819 he became a member of the Chamber of Peers. In 1822, Davout was elected mayor of savigny sur orge a position he held for a year. His son Louis Napoleon was also mayor of the city from 1843 to 1846. A main square bears their name in the city, as does a boulevard in Paris. Honours and awards. He held the following honours and awards. Knight Grand Cross of the Order of the Legion of Honour. Knight of the Order of the Iron Crown. Grand Cross and Star of the Virtue T. Military. Knight Grand Cross of the Order of the White Eagle. Knight of the Order of Christ. Knight Grand Cross of the Military Order of Saint. Henry. Knight Grand Cross of the Military Order of Max Joseph, Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Order of Saint, Stephen of Hungary, Knight of the Military Order of Maria Theresa, Knight Grand Cross of the Order of the Elephant, Personal Life, Davout was known as a methodical person in both military and personal affairs, within the army and among his social peers. He was often considered cold and distant, while respected, he was not well liked. During times of peace, he preferred to spend time with his family and care for his home, rather than cultivate his high social standing. Because of his stubborn personality and limited social skills, he developed many enemies and antagonists within the army's officer corps, notably Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte, Joachim Murat, Louis Alexandre Berthier and Baron Thiebo. Perhaps his fiercest anger was directed towards Bernadotte, who failed to come to his aid at our stat. Though close enough to observe the smoke and hear the cannon fire, his anger was so intense that Davout requested to settle the matter with a personal duel, averted only by Napoleon's personal intervention. Bernadotte was eventually sent back to Paris in disgrace after being caught by Napoleon retreating without orders at the Battle of Wagram. Bernadotte then caught the eye of the Swedish ambassador, looking for a well-connected French officer to take on the role of heir to the Swedish throne. When Sweden threw in their lot against Napoleon in the War of the Sixth Coalition, Davout personally asked to be placed opposite Bernadotte's contingent, in order to teach him a lesson once and for all. 
but with Davout assigned to defend Hamburg, they never did face each other in battle. Of the other marshals, Davout had the best relations with Michel Ney, Nicolas Charles Audinot and Laurent Wouvy and Saint Cyr. His best friend was possibly Charles Etienne Guden de la Sablonnière, one of his subordinates, who was killed in battle in 1812. Family Davout was also noted for his loyalty to his longtime second wife Louise Aime Q.T. Julie Davout, whom he married in 1801 and who remained with him until his death. Their marriage was loving and, most notably, the couple seemed to have been faithful to each other despite very long periods of separation. They had eight children, four of whom died in childhood. Paul, Josephine, Antoinette Josephine, married in 1820 Achille, Comte Felix Vigia, Adele Napoleon, married on 14 March 1827 Etienne, Comte de Cambacaris, Napoleon, Napoleon Louis, second Duke of Auerstadt, second and last Prince of Vecmuel, who died unmarried and without issue, Jules, Adelaide Louise, married on 17 August 1835 François Edmond de Coulibuff, Marquis de Blocville. The title of Duke went to the descendants of Louis Nicolas' brother Charles Isidore by his marriage in 1824 to Claire de Chevry. He also had a sister Julie, married in 1801 to Marc Antoine Bon and de la Bonanera, first Count de Beaumont, and another brother, Alexandre. First Baron Davout, married in 1808 to Ally Parasote, they had issue.